everybody and welcome back to the Biff Rugby League podcast, episode number 17, I believe. It's 17 or 18. Um, once again, apologies for those who watch or listen to us through YouTube. Uh, Discord's uh, video settings are being, quite frankly, a massive pain in the arse, which means we can't see each other. And because we can't see each other, you guys aren't able to see us. So you're once again just listening to us, but looking at our, our logo. But we have we have a returnee this week, um, Toby. Welcome back. How how's your first few weeks of Derby County been? Yeah, I mean we don't talk about football on this podcast, but they're undefeated at home, um, which is you know I guess when you're a season ticket holder, that's what you like to see the most. Um, I wish that I had some rugby league to go to, or some professional rugby league to go to on the Sundays, but that might be something which comes up in during this podcast. So, yeah, hundred percent. Is we're going to focus. It's going to be a really short and sweet podcast. We're going to focus on the IMG survey and then straight onto our set of six. So we're going to have a proper discussion about the IMG survey that has been released. Um, before we do that, though, Robin, how have you been? How's your fortnight been? How have, uh, I won't ask about Lee versus York, but yeah, um, I, 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 I don't, I don't want to ask, but I, I will. <laughs> how did how did that feel? Because like you're sitting sixth in the championship. But obviously, yeah. any team to score 100 points on anyone at any level is is not nice to see. How did it feel it's from your point of view? Yeah, it's embarrassing. I, I almost went to it as well. I was t- <laughs> t- talking to a man saying, like, oh, we could go. I'm so glad I didn't because that would have been the worst afternoon of my life, I think. But, yeah, I, I tuned in to just see how the score was going and I think they were, like, 70 nil. I was like, oh, it must be nearly over. But, oh, no, <laughs> like 30 more points to put on us. So, yeah, pretty remember. embarrassing, but... You put in the chat, I was like, oh, it's not been a very good weekend for sport. Like, I think I put in, our oh, Chelsea have lost, this team have lost, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Halifax rugby uh, football team have lost again. And you were like, oh, let's not talk about teams losing. Lee have just battered York. And I put, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> and then I then I realised the result was 100, and, was 100 <laughs> points to four or 100 points to six. Yeah. And Do you know just, what? I've had like, pe- people in the office that don't care about rugby. <laughs> I've seen it in like the York press, and they've come and like made it made an effort to come and see me and tell me. I'm like, go away! You don't, <laughs> you don't see to me ever. <laughs> Why are you yeah, rubbing it in I'm now? Good. Like, it's yeah. nice though because it, it it's it's nice in a way because that result didn't matter in the end. You're still a, you're still going to be a playoff team, um, Toby. Yeah. More, in terms of playoffs and promotion, Keith Lee secured their promotion to League One. Does that does that put a lot of pressure on North Wales now to go and win the playoff? I mean, they bottled the playoffs last year, in my opinion. You know, they were the form team going into the playoffs and then lost all steam towards the end. Um, I think that you know they're going to have a firm test. Um, well, I mean, every game is going to be a firm test in the playoffs, but um, I think that's you know Swinton, especially, will give them a real close game. Um, so it. I, I don't know if there's pressure on them or not with uh, Anthony Murray leaving at the end of the season. Yeah, we spoke about that um, two weeks ago and it was sort of like, we didn't know why he was going to leave. There was no sort of answer. We thought he might go to another club. Is there the potential of him going to a, a rugby union team and sort of t- taking his coaching talents there? Have, have you heard anything? I know you're obviously not living there at the minute, but have you heard anything from family or friends that have been to games? No, it... To be fair, he tried, you know he left once and he went into the amateur game, and then he got coaxed back by well, I'm not sure how, but you know he got convinced to sort of come back. So I think that maybe this has never been his long term sort of what he wanted to do um, with his career long term, and he might go back to sort of being with his family and uh, coaching amateur, which is a lot less pressure. Yeah, obviously, imagine if you turned around to West Wales Raiders and went, "Yeah, I'll, I'll come and coach here," because. Um, who who knows? They might be an amateur club in, in four months' time. So, um, mm-hmm. it, before we before we move on to the IMG survey, and this is where we talk about sort of. I've not seen the survey, and I don't know if any either of you two have. And those that have listened, in, some of you will have seen it, completed it. Some of you won't have completed it yet. Uh, before we move on to that, which is going to be our main thing, let's look at Super League really, really quickly. It's not pleasant viewing for Toulouse. They, mathematically, they could still stay up, but they've got Catalan to play this weekend. And they've got to make up six points and just under a hundred points worth of points difference. Um, it's it's not nice, is it? It's it's a bit disheartening because we wanted them to stay up, didn't we, as a trio? 
Yeah, last time we spoke, there was still a chance. It was a slim chance, but there was still a chance. Um, but yeah, then then Wakefield beat Wigan, which is a bit of an upset. And I think that was it. As soon as I saw that result came in, I was like, yeah, that's that's the season over for him. I mean, like you said, there's still a chance, but it's, it's probably not going to happen. So pretty gutted about it, you know. I've, I've read that they've been getting pretty decent crowds, like they've matched other Super League teams. They've also been paying for everyone else's um, airplane fares. Yeah, um, half, half a million mental. pound it's, gonna, it's cost them this season. Yeah, so I think uh, we've screwed them over really, haven't we? And they've given us some good games and added a lot to the competition. So it is going to be a real shame to see them go down. Yeah, uh, Toby, your, your view on one that impending, like the, the very much going to happen relegation, but also why should Toulouse be forced to pay the half a million pound for clubs to travel to them? Should that not be something that the RFL or these other clubs who we believe are, uh, are financially sustainable, shouldn't they be forking out these travel costs themselves? Yeah, absolutely. You should be expected to do it yourself. And I think that, you know, every player loves a trip to France. Um, and I think that it's something that, you know, they should be, prepa they should be prepared to do and be part of um, when they sign up to be a semi-professional or professional rugby league player. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely sort of think that it's down to the clubs and the players to be committed to making that journey to France and not for Toulouse to try and commit clubs to making that journey to them. However, what I will say is, you know, it would help if maybe Toulouse participated in, like, the Challenge Cup a bit more, um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And we know we don't know that these might be some of the questions that, that we that come up in the IMG survey. Um, we're gonna we're gonna crack on with that. We've skipped to the question that says, "Do you follow any of the following sports?" So, the first question was, um, "Where you're from?" Uh, which like which nationality? Then there was an age. Then there was what area of the country do you live in? Those ones we've just based on mine. We're all eighteen to twenty four, so that was pretty easy in terms of nationality. We've gone with British, and then the area of the country is Bedfordshire. So this is sort of my survey in in terms of how we're going to complete it. The the boys will will then obviously go away and complete it before the deadline of the thirty first of August. Um, the first question then is to us is do we follow any of the following sports I follow and the thing is there's only cricket rugby union and football on there do you, do you think that's a little bit do either of you think that's a little bit limited before we click our options I guess they're the they're the big three challenges but yeah it's that like you definitely could have more options now couldn't you for example um, my, my other sport that I follow is Formula One mm. and to be honest with you it takes up quite a lot of my attention so to just Completely on a Sunday. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, 100%. So, to, to not even be able to get that information from the survey, I think that was a, an oversight. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I follow, I'd say I follow all three of the sports and probably follow five or six more in terms of absolutely follow. Just before we went uh, recorded, Toby, you said you, you obviously, we, we know, and a lot of the listeners know, you're, you're very much a religious Derby County fan now that you've, you've moved to that area, a season ticket holder. You, you'd definitely be ticking football and then I'd be ticking any. Do either of you two follow cricket or rugby union to, you'd say you're a fan of a club or would you say you, you follow them m more religiously than any other sport? Obviously rugby league being your your number one, I'd say. But then would either of these three be your second sport? Obviously Toby's yours would be football, but... Uh, personally, no. And I, and I would actually do everything in my power to avoid rugby union, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to click it just because I, I do follow rugby union in this area because it's a rugby union town. And with rugby union, like I know, I know the scores, I know who's winning things. I watch Wales and the Six Nations, that kind of thing. But I, I don't think the only way I'd go to a rugby union game would be to go to Leicester Tigers just to experience their ground and stuff on a Saturday when Derby were away somewhere that I didn't want to go and weren't at home. So you know, there's lots of connotations to why I'd go and watch rugby union live. Yeah, in that, in that cricket case, wise, I went. Go on, yeah. I was gonna say cricket wise, it's like the cricket season. We could have a whole podcast on what's wrong with the cricket season to the <laughs> point where, to the point where I've been to Derbyshire twice this season, and they don't, they they actually have no games left on um, a week, no home games left on weekends, 
um, for the rest of the season now. Wow. So, how, how is it? It's a four-day sport in terms of county championship. Yeah. And no games all their four-day games are Monday to Thursday. That? How have they managed that? Yeah, all so their four-day games are Monday to Thursday. All their one-day games are like Wednesdays and Fridays and stuff. It's mental. Why would you do that? That's awful, that. Um, so in that case then, I'll, I'll leave cricket blank. We won't click cricket because I wouldn't really say I follow cricket and I wouldn't really say you two follow cricket either. I'll, I'll, t- I'll make sure we click click rugby union and I'll, and I'll click football. So we'll, we'll go with two of the three because um, it's clearly not none of the above and we'll move on. This is this is as far as I got last time. So do you subscribe or have access to the following platforms? Um, the Zone, Premier Sports, Now TV, Sky Sports, BT Sports and Amazon Prime Video. Um I have access to every one of these. I don't know about you two. I've got access to Sky Sports. My um, access is Now TV and Prime Video. Okay, so what I'll do. What's the What's the is it then? Uh, the Zone. So that's where, if you weren't in the UK, I think you could watch the Anthony Joshua fight this weekend. I think if you're also not. I think you can also watch the KSI double header fight coming up. There's a lot of boxing on there, oh, um, yeah. and like foreign foreign sports. There's a lot of like American. It's very much very much Americanized, but a hell of a lot of boxing. Um, so I, I have access to that. Premier, Premier sports I subscribe to, and um, I watch a lot of the championship on a Monday. Uh, Now TV I subscribe to. Have access to Sky Sports through Now TV. And I have access to BT Sport and Amazon Prime through other other things. Which, I mean, I watch a hell of a lot of sport, don't I? <laughs> yeah, and I guess this is quite an important question if they're trying to um, say to uh, like future TV broadcasters, mm. you know, if, if a lot of people click on Amazon Prime video, maybe it will strengthen their argument to, to take to Amazon Prime and say, we already have a big overlap of your audience that yeah. would engage with our sport yeah 100 percent. i think the, pr- the problem now is with amazon prime is they've just put their prices up so people are dropping amazon prime because they're not amazon prime is all about getting your deliveries far faster we know that and a lot of yeah. people use that to then piggyback on top of the video um so in my in my opinion i think that's that's going to be one where you'll find a lot of people might just click have access to is there any there yeah. that you is there anything on there that you would have access to that was without payment? So obviously the BBC isn't on there. BBC Sport isn't on there. There also isn't ITV. There isn't Channel Four. Would you Would you like to see them? Un- I don't know what the next question is, but would you like to see them underneath as have access to or no access to? Or yeah, I mean, I, I kind of guess. I guess it's just assumed that you do have access to that nowadays. I guess this is more focused on the the paid subscription services. Yeah. I I do ask you a question though, since you've got them all, which one's the best? Um, ooh. Uh, I'd go BT. I think BT is yeah. in terms of in terms of for rugby league. I think Premier Sports do an absolutely fantastic job, and their coverage is better than Sky with what you pay for. If you're going in terms of all of the rugby league content, I think you're putting. Premier Sports, Channel 4, BBC, and then Sky in that order. I think Sky Sky is bottom of my list in terms of the four that you have access to for the whole of Rugby League. Uh, Amazon mm-hmm. Prime is very much Premier League football and tennis and a lot of the winter, uh, the autumn rugby union games. So for me, I don't use that a lot. Sky, I have access through Now TV. So I, for me, Now TV is very, very useful, but it's a little bit costly. Uh, and the zone, I don't use that much. So I can only really say it's pretty useful for boxing and watching a lot of the American boxing. Yeah. But for me, for me, I'd say out of those, I think Now TV and Premier Sports are probably second and third to BT. Uh, but then again, to me, Now TV and Sky Sports are exactly the same thing because they are the same channels. So for, yeah, so for me, a bit misleading. they're very misleading because they're. They are the same because I subscribe to Now TV, but I have access to Sky Sports, but only because I subscribe to Now TV. Does that make sense? Mm. So mm. That, I think to me, you could either have, I think Now TV, Sky Sports should be, the, I, I don't know, it's really, because you could subscribe to Now TV, but not to Sky Sports. So it's it's very much understandable. Yeah. Um, and, and also, I've just thought, um, watch NRL should really be on there because that would tell you whether people are interested in. I also have that as well. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> <you do? laughs> so yeah, um, I'm gonna be up. I didn't watch. I'm gonna be up tomorrow morning watching that and waiting for the BT engineer to arrive. So um, I've got all of them. Toby, do you do you have access to many of these, or do you have access to any or all of these? No, it's just I just have access to um, Amazon and Now TV. So that's Now TV without the sports package. Um, okay. You know, so. I'm sure I can uh, watch repeats of uh, Hawaii Five O while I <laughs> while the rugby league's on. What? I'm yeah, not sure that's very I mean, helpful would knowledge consider, for him. Would you consider getting a sports package for Now TV? I mean, it is thirty four pounds a month. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I mean, I disagree with the way Sky price their sports. To be honest, um, they have dedicated channels, and then they don't let you buy a dedicated channel. And then even when they do, they sometimes like tease you and put. The, the sport on a different channel to try and get you to buy yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, um, when they brought when so, they yeah, I just, mix, I like that. And that's the free access one. And a lot of you'll find a lot of the rugby league games on a Thursday and Friday night they put on Sky Sports Mix. But I think you can only get Sky Sports Mix if you've got like a Virgin, if you've got Freeview, you don't get it. Do you think there should be a way of putting Sky Sports yeah. Mix onto Freeview so then people who have Freeview can watch those games? I mean, I just think Sky would never do that because that just puts too no, much sport. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah. So to be fair, I used to pay for BT Sport when they like last a cu- last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Me and a friend would go half on BT Sport so we could watch the Champions League in uni. Yeah, and, that, and that's the reason I've got BT Sport is because there's a lot on there that I watch. I mean, there's National League football, there's Premier League football, there's. Yeah. Um, rugby union in the winter. There's Champions League football. It's still twenty five pound a month, is it? Uh, it's twenty five pound a month. I mean, I get it in my broadband deal, so I literally have all of this in my. I have Now TV, BT Sport, Netflix, all in my broadband deal. So it's all in one for me. Um, but yeah, I believe it's still oh. extra for if you want it. It's twenty five pound a month just for twenty five pound a month. If it was your only sport streaming service, isn't awful. No, no. it's ten pound cheaper than now tv on there in terms of well nine pound cheaper than now tv but it's also the same price as watch nrl and you're getting a hell of a lot more content through bt sport than what you are through watch nrl um but uh, like, so I, I basically like, we go on we well we want we want the rfl to make a deal with bt sports then don't we so that's that would you know, be that's the dream. Uh, BT, bt and channel four are probably the two that you look at and go yeah fantastic especially for super league and then I think you try and get more championship games on Premier Sports. Mm. But I moved on. I subscribed to the two that I subscribed to, and then I put, have access to the rest. Just because as a trio, we have access to all three. And if we, if you two whatever wanted to, you could then obviously just piggyback off what I use, which is what we just said we said we would do about Premier Sports. But I don't think we ever have done this year, have we? <laughs> Can't get Discord to right. stream it. Yeah, Discord wouldn't stream it, so. Um, next question. Thinking about rugby league, which of the following statements most applies to you? Um, I'll go from bottom to top. The first one is I am a general sports fan. The second one is I enjoy rugby league, but I wouldn't describe myself as a committed fan. And the top one is I am a committed rugby league fan. Disagree with me if you feel like it, but I feel like we're all the top one, aren't we? We are. That's interesting because I feel like I'm not because I'm in a place where there's no live rugby league and where... The I'm not able to watch any of it without you know you know without having to break laws effectively. But that but I think the fact that if you're willing to break laws, you are committed in my opinion. <laughs> like if you're happy to find yeah. a, like a dodgy stream and watch the NRL on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or piggyback off my login, which you're not yeah. obviously meant to do, or watch the BBC without a. A TV license, then I think that you are a commit rugby league fan and you're doing the best well, I'm a TV for the area that you're in. I mean, I think you've got Derby Elks is your closest rugby league team to where you are. It's just whether or not you know where. Yeah, and I mean, if they're watching us, <laughs> you're going to rock up. You're going to be the only fan they've got apart from that isn't a family member. But to me, I think, I think, I think, from my point of view, you'd fall into that because when you're not at uni, you try and get to as many games as possible when you're back home, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you, you, yeah. you follow it closely, like, you can be part of a weekly podcast on it, so... Yeah, exactly, yeah you're, always, yeah, you're also part of a podcast that specifically talks about rugby league and where... No, but I guess my point there is just how... Well, it's crap, but I guess my point there is just how how the game can sort of 
feel like you're losing it just because yeah. of where you live, because of how of tight, tightly packed into one area it is. Yeah, yeah I, I totally. I, I also think the uh, options are a bit like diff- like I feel like part of the confusion is do they mean a committed rugby league fan is in? I'm a I'm a physical fan that attends games. I I like it. Like, can I not be a general sports fan and a committed rugby league fan? Why are they two opposite ends of the spectrum? Yeah. So it's not really like very easy to understand what they're asking of you. Yeah, this no, question. I, I agree. I think you could have that. I am a general sports fan, but not a rugby league fan. Or I am a yeah. committed rugby league fan and a general sports fan. I am only a rugby league fan and nothing else. Do you know? And I think that I could do yeah. with you. I mean, because it's the, the survey that I'm, uh, I'm submitting for mine, I'm going to click I'm a committed rugby league fan, but. I can see where you're coming from, Toby, in terms of where you feel you might sit in that. But I also understand your point, Robin, as where... I'd still say I was committed. You'd still say you were? Yeah, yeah I still say I'm committed. I just feel like... Yeah, I almost feel like saying I'm committed compared to, like, you, Brad, when you've got all the subscriptions and all the... <laughs> and, you know, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm yeah my, 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 my dream was always to... That's what I was like when I was able to be. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. We're only you're only able to commit as much as you're able to. I think if if you're if you're in a slightly different area of the country, yeah. you're going to commit a lot more. If as long as you're committing to your highest level, I think you say you're a committed rugby league fan, no matter where you are in the country and how much you follow rugby league now. Like I think we're always going to fall into that category, depending depending on where we are. Um, the next one is a little bit more personal. It's not necessarily one we can answer as a group. But do you play, coach, or volunteer at a community rugby league? club i mean i i volunteer and play i don't i don't coach anymore but i wanted to coach and i don't officially have a coaching badge um i volunteer and play robin you play touch rugby league don't you yeah does that count i don't know if that really counts that's, it's, it's, that's that's what i was going to ask do you think that counts because as well it's asking a community rugby league club and it's it's not because it's through the night so um it's not like your amateur level so i don't i Personally, don't think I can really count that. I think, yeah. Uh, I, 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 if it was me, I'd take none of the above. And I guess Toby, you, you take none of the above as well because of where you are and not having the access to a local club at that level. That would be correct, wouldn't it? Yeah. If you, if you change the A to a U in a coach, then you've got more of an idea of how I get involved. <laughs> you with that? <laughs> I was clever. I like that. I do like that. If you had the opportunity, either of you, to, to step up at a, a community rugby league club and coach or volunteer or play, whether it be coaching juniors or when you're a bit older, coaching adults, an open age side or a women's side or an academy or whatever, would, would you feel like you would be happy to do that, providing you were able to commit to that? I would love to. When, when I had a lot more free time, I, did, I have coached, volunteered and played for rugby league mm-hmm. clubs. And it is like a, a real passion of mine. And it's a shame that when you're an adult, you don't have time to do things. But maybe one day I'll get back into it. But I would love to. Yeah, no, I, I totally see where you're coming from. Uh, Toby, did you volunteer at all at Crusaders when you were there? Or did you just watch in terms of that? In ter- I know they weren't a community club. but um, I was a... Oh, I think I, went, I think I might have been a ball boy once. That's work. Uh, to me, that's work. Um, that's but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do. No, I didn't volunteer really at Crusaders. Um, they had a strong team of volunteers, to be fair. And I was, I guess, I was quite young when I was sort of before I moved. Um, but I, I've always thought like there's fun things to be had with the volunteer side of it. But sometimes volunteer means hang, handing out like free try signs outside a stadium or something, yeah. you know. Yeah. So and that's not quite. It's also I, 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 by the chance. To, it's sorry, no, I've always said that like, I would stop my career. I'm oh, sorry. Go on. But yeah, I was just saying, I'd always, I would change careers tomorrow if I could get like a fully paid job, like doing something like in terms of managing a sports club, oh, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 100%. Well, I wouldn't train it to do it. But like if someone turned around to me and they were like, we want you to take us to the top level of that we can reach or something like that, I'd be there like, yeah, give me the job, I've got this. You want to be a head couch then? <laughs> head couch. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Um, right then, which of the following leagues do you follow or have an interest in? Um, Super League, Championship, League One, Women's Super League, Wheelchair Super League, NRL, NRLW. Uh, I think we should be honest here. I would say 
I follow Super League, Championship, League One, Women's Super League and NRL. I, I, I wouldn't say I follow the Wheelchair Super League or the NRLW. I don't know if that, that would be the same for you too, or if there's any of those you would tick or would I you? don't follow. I wouldn't tick Women's Super League personally, and it's a, I feel really horrible doing that. Like I, when, when I went through this question on my phone, I was there, like I wanted to be able to tick one of the women's ones because I've noted when the Women's League start, I've noted when they're on yeah. like i have the intention of watching them and if someone gave me a ticket to a game happening that i could get to in the women's super league i wouldn't say no yeah like it's not that i don't want to follow or have an interest in women's super league it's just lower down my list than other things to the point where it just can't it's not feasible for me to put have an interest in it yeah i, I totally understand i mean I, i'm ticking it but, and i'll be honest i only follow the women's super league as a women's super league south because of bedford and, I, and i'll be honest like if Bedford went in the Super League South, I probably wouldn't follow them in the Super League because it doesn't, it didn't before Bedford were in the Super League South pique my interest because I was too busy following the community game, the teams that I supported. But now that we're in there and some of our players are being like with Caroline Colley on loan at Huddersfield, I'm sort of looking at how Huddersfield are getting on. Very much interested to see how the women's team is selected through the Super League teams are winning and losing and stuff like that and I, but other than that i wouldn't say before two seasons ago including this season so before covid i wouldn't have followed women's super league at all Robin, yeah would you, would you yeah, say you i'm not like, yeah. i mean i've been i've been to a couple of the knights games but i don't go out of my way to check the score and see the league table and see you know if, if yeah. any players have signed or anything like that like i do with the other like leagues yeah i get that um well i i'm sort of saying with you i've only really to be honest with you i've only really picked it up since we've started this podcast and we've been talking about it on here yeah um before that well, well we we all watched that um final uh, um Oh, where was it now? In, Near Manchester. In, that, in oh, that, I, I, yeah. missed, I missed it, but yeah, it was the same. That day. was my first experience with it, and to be honest, I didn't touch it again for another year after that. Yeah. But I do have, I do have an interest in it, and it's some. I'm like Toby. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I, I, I want like... to have more interest, but I, I wonder if it's more because it's not put in front of me, whereas the other leagues are. So that yeah, it's sure. like if yeah. I spend an hour a week catching up on things, and. Like, I'm, there's two hours worth of Super League and Championship to get through before the Super, the Women's Super League. I'm going to miss it. So, yeah. Would you like to see a list of community leagues on here? Or would you just is it okay just for these at the minute? For, for IMG in terms of, they're only going to be pushing these top leagues, aren't they? Like, we, we are, we've yeah. got to understand yeah. that. Well, the fans are gonna... I guess so. I mean... I mean, mate, I mean, at the start they asked about whether which nation you're from, and they listed like Tonga and France and places. So they could have had some, uh, they could have had like Elite One and stuff in there for, yeah. for those fans. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd have said I was interested in Elite One, but I don't follow it. But then again, I'd, I'd say I'm interested in the Wheelchair Super League and also the NRLW. I just don't follow it because I don't have the time to follow it. But I am interested in it, and I, I've got wheelchair games for the World Cup. I do watch the wheelchair games when they're on the BBC, but I wouldn't say I follow it, but I am interested. So I think you could have probably split this into two separate questions, couldn't you? Yeah, I think, like, I think there's, there's like, some of them are, like, absolutely yes, and then some of these are, like, mm, sort of, and it's, and it's hard to know whether to give a yes or no to that. Yeah. I think this question is like what IMG are trying to find out is you know we get it, to grow the game at the community level you need to have re like places that people want to aspire to be in yeah. so you know the kids need to aspire to be in these leagues so it's that kind of like you know what leagues do kids actually want to grow up and play in yeah, <laughs> type no, I, thing yeah, yeah I totally get what you're saying there um oh, okay this is a different this is slightly different how do you interact with each of the following leagues? Uh, we'll start with Super League. So the options are watch on TV, watching using a subscription service, uh, via sports news websites such as Sky Sports, via social media, or none of these. So we'll start with Super League. Um, I don't watch it on TV. I watch it through a subscription service. I What's the difference? Uh, I think in terms of Now TV as a subscription service, well, yeah. No, I do watch it on TV because I watch it on Channel 4, right? 
and that that isn't a subscription service, is it? So I do watch it on TV. Yeah. So if you watch games on Channel Four, I guess watch if you watch it on all four, if you watch it on all four, yeah, then it's a awesome. subscription service. Yeah, no, I get, I get that. Yeah. Um, but also subscription service like Premier Sports, Watch NRL. Yeah. I know that's not Super League, but like those are all Now TV, BT Sport are all subscription services. We all, do we all follow it via news websites? Do we always look at BBC Sport? Do we always look at um, BBC Sport is my it, BBC Sport is like my main place for a rugby league. Yeah, and then after that, it's probably after that it's then like I Google something that's come up, and then I'll end up on the rugby league specific websites. Yeah, I, mm. I end up going to sometimes I look at Sky Sports about especially games coming up. Yeah, love love rugby league is. Like BBC Sports and Rugby League are my two that I tend to use. Yeah, and via social media, we're all like, we're all looking at Super League on social media, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, yeah. We're taking, we're taking well, four of those for Super League. Uh, we dropped down to Championship. We're not watching it on TV. We're watching it using a subscription oh. service, aren't we? Because yeah, I mean per- personally, I, I'm not. Yeah. But um, yeah. So, in terms of, yeah. 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 Um, we follow that via news websites, like we always look at, well it's not really on the BBC, we, we can only really look at the scores and the league table, there's no news, there's well, something BBC. there. I still use the BBC website to be able to do it though, and the same social media I still get, like I only know about the league game because of social media and stuff. Yeah, I totally agree with that. But yeah, no, I totally get that. In terms of, do you, we probably say via social media for all of them. Or then again, probably women's social, women's super league. I probably don't. I probably wouldn't tick any of those boxes. Would you? Uh, I I would tick the social media for all four. Okay. Yeah, because I because that's actually probably where I get most of the information, and then if I'm like prepared for this or I've seen something that I want to know more about, that's when I'll go to the websites. Yeah. But everything mostly comes up on social media, well, or or our WhatsApp chat. That's a very good source of. Yeah, <laughs> of that, thing is, that is that is social media, isn't it? It's like WhatsApp is yeah. just a form of social media. So we are always on social media because we're discussing everything that's going on. Um, League One and Women's Super League, they're not necessarily on telly or subscription service. So I wouldn't interact with any of them. I've, I've not watched any of the Super League games yeah, on. Yeah, I suppose you've got the R League app. I d- yeah, we, so we probably put them on the subscription yeah. service, but on TV it's just Super League. Say that again, sorry. Yeah. Does anyone, like, do any of us actually use R League to watch League One and Women's Super League at the moment? Uh, I have done this year. I have watched a few Cornwall games. I've watched a few. I think I watched the York game the other day on the way to London oh, um, yeah. in the morning. Um, yeah, those Cornwall games have been fantastic. But I mean, in terms of watch on TV, it's just Super League and it's just the ones on Channel 4, isn't it? Because obviously we don't get access to these games on TV through subscription services. Yeah. So, and I, I, I hope that yeah. IMG don't get this survey and go, oh, look, nobody watches Women's Super League on TV, so let's not put that on TV. Yeah, they need to look at it and go, nobody can't. watches it on TV because <laughs> it's not on TV. Yeah. And I was thinking, they might have a bit of Challenge Cup on there as well. I was, gonna, really... I was literally about to say, do you think, it might come up later, but do you think the Challenge Cup should be on here? Absolutely, because that's, I would tick all four for that one. Yeah, hundred. I would as well. I would as well. Uh, let's move on to, ah, which of the following teams do you support? Um, for me, Super League, I don't support the Super League side. Would do any of you? Yeah, same here. So I, I would probably say Castleford is my Super League team, but not as not like you know. And I, I would have agreed with you when Matt Cook played there, but I didn't. I don't follow them as much now. I just watch it for the sake of watching. I have a Castleford. I think we all do. Don't I mean, I, I, in that case, I'll, I'll go. I'll go Cast because I think we all have a little bit of a soft spot for for them in terms of they're probably our favourite yeah. Super League side. Um, championship, I'm going to have to go with Halifax. I know you would go with York, Robin. Um, yeah. Toby, if you had a championship side, who would you go for? Newcastle. Newcastle. So we'd all go for someone different with Newcastle. Quite, which is quite nice awful, to see. My awful prediction. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fact, quickly on Newcastle, they've decided to go back part-time. Um, it didn't work for London at the start <laughs> of the year. Do you think it will work for Newcastle next year? 
Oh, Short Dennis term, Dennis Betts is short term now, long term, yeah. Dennis, Dennis Betts is we'll see what happens in the immediately. Yeah. When, so, well, I'll try signing. Yeah, we'll see what happens in the off season for them. Um, be very, very interesting. League One. There's only one answer here, isn't there? Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for me, oh, Celtic team. I don't. Uh, for me, I would say none of them. Just my personal opinion, because yeah. I, I like to see the Crusaders do well just for yourself, Toby. Which is it's obviously the way we are. We like to see each other's teams do well, apart from when they play each other. In terms of Midlands Hurricanes, when they were Coventry Bears, I like to see them do well. But under their new sort of guidance and how they've been this year they've not really engaged with their community as much and i don't particularly i'm not a fan of the way scholars run as a club so for me i wouldn't go any i would go none of these but yourself toby is obviously not north wales toby uh, robin even are you picking a team from league one no i think the only league one team i've supported is your knights when they got relegated and they were in, their league, in league one and i think well bradford went into league one for a bit didn't they yeah, yeah, it, it was when you're over there. Yeah, Toronto were obviously in League One. Hemel Stags are in League One. But I wouldn't have said I support any any of these teams. Can I just point out that there's been three yellow cards in this Leeds Huddersfield game? There's four minutes left and there's two points in it. This is this is wow. absolutely this has been one of the worst games of rugby league I've seen in a long, long time. Huddersfield would be well clear if Ollie Russell could kick goals. Um, which of the women's Super League teams do you support? Right, I've got a problem here. I can't click my women's Super League side. I'm not happy. I'm not. Ha I, that's that's that to me. That, you can't call it women's Super League South and not have it in this list of women's Super League teams. None yeah, of them I, are I, there. I agree with that. Fair point. So there should be a. Other. It's never been properly. No, it hasn't. It's, been a, it's a Championship South. It is, yeah. Um, but the fact that they call it Women's Super League South, and then there's a, a poll here that goes, which of the following Super League team, Women's Super League teams you support? And there isn't an option for any of those teams. I think I don't know if it's an IMG or it's a Rugby Football League thing, but the league is in the elite section. And if you go to Women's Super League, it's a drop-down option and one of the, one of the Super League t in terms of the tables and fixtures. But, so it should be an option here. I think this is a really poor representation of this question um, and for that reason I am going to click none because I don't support any of the other teams um, but what like I was, they've just done themselves over there because you're a massive women's super league self why don't you follow every single week but, you're I, heavily don't, involved with but I don't support any of these uh, 14 but, teams yeah but yeah so your answer you just look like um, 12 teams even. you know so, someone that's not interested so they've missed out they, massively there yeah, massively missed out here um, if they'd have seen that I'm from Bedfordshire and they see that I click Bedford Tigers, they can see that that's, that's where my loyalties lie. But the fact that there's none there is really, really disappointing. Um, for those listening, Blake Austin has just scored a try to put Leeds up and it's going to break Huddersfield hearts. Uh, no. do, do you support a national team? Yeah, that's pretty obvious. We all support England or, in your case, Toby Wales, don't we? Yeah. Yep. That's pretty simple. Come on, we'll my Say that again. My hand won't I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm going to go with England. I think Toby's mic's broken. Yeah, I think it might be. You do keep cutting out. Um, I've, I've clicked England. Obviously, Wales are on there. Jewish. Could I just... Uh, Spain going to the World Cup, by the way. Uh. I didn't think they were, but Spain are on there as an option. As are... So you've got Australia, Brazil, Canada, Cook Islands, England, Fiji, France, Greece. Oh, Spain and the women's Ireland. or the wheelchair. They might be in one of those two, actually, which is a very, very good point. Um, but I've gone with England. So we'll just move on really quickly. Uh, how often do you watch Super League matches on TV during the season? Um, for me, it's more than one game per round. I'm probably watching on the Thursday and Friday, guaranteed. Um, one game per round, monthly, less often or never. Um... They're quite decent answers, aren't they? Yeah, I'd say, like, no, just being picky, but I'd say fortnightly. Should be in there. But, yeah, um, that'd be my answer. But yeah, Toby, do you know? I think Monty will do. No, I've, I've been the less often category here. In terms it's, of uh, Channel Four games, I just the think... ones you get to watch, right? 
Well, no, they're not because they're twelve thirty on a Saturday. Is like I leave the house for the football at like twelve if we've got a home game. Yeah, that's uh, that's a very very good point. Um, and then you go to the pub and it's not, it's not on the pub TV. No. no. I've been. I, in fact, I went to a pub in the middle of June and it, they, they had um they had Super League on them, which was a Channel Four game. Okay. That's the only time I've ever seen it on in a pub. Fuck horror! It's actually on in a pub in somewhere not in the north of England. Um, thinking about digital platforms, how do you follow your club or the RFL slash Super League? Um, everything but TikTok. I don't even use our league now. It, for me, it would yeah, just I'd be probably... Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Yeah. yeah, I probably don't use any. I don't use our league to follow the RFL or the club and stuff. Um, but we'd, we'd, that's, that's a pretty simple question, isn't it? In terms of digital platforms, like. You thought they're only going to have those six options. There's not. I can't think of any more that you're going to throw in there. No, no, I, I agree. Yeah, Unless you put, you could have gone like BBC Sport, like websites. But. Yeah, you could have gone websites. But yeah, I get, I get that. That's that's quite a yeah. nice question. That's quite simple. Are you a member of our league? Are we all members of our league? Aren't we? Yeah. Simple. Yes or no. It's quite nice. Are you a member or season ticket holder of a club? Um, technically, I'm a member at York because I had to sign point. up to buy tickets that, that week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm technically also a member of both the Tigers, which counts, right? Um, yeah, I guess I guess so. I'd say what we're members, right, of the clubs that we follow. Because we... See, I don't, I don't really... I wouldn't consider myself a member of the York Knights. No, I'd probably... Yeah, in that case, I'd probably say no. I'd just say yeah, like Leeds will probably have a membership, but you get exclusive tickets mm. before everyone else or something. Yeah, that's quite that's quite a nice little question, really. Uh, how many times have you been to a paid rugby league game this year? Four yellow cards in this game, flipping out. Huddersfield ending the game with eleven men on the pitch. This has been an absolute shambles. Uh, sorry, how many times have you been to a paid rugby league game this year? None. One to three, four to six, seven plus. Uh, one to three. I've only been to one paid game this year. Uh, I've I've usually done seven plus. Yeah, you go every week. What about yourself, Toby? Obviously, with being away, but then obviously sometimes you're at home during the, the summer. Have you managed to get to many games yeah, this year? Yeah. No, it's zero. I was only home for a week. I think I had a wedding the week and I could have gone. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's quite nice, isn't it? One to three, four to six, seven plus. But there is over twenty games in a season, so why is that not spread out a little bit more? Yeah. Why is there not more options there? I, I yeah, I guess I guess you could. Um, this question is probably going to be quite difficult for us. I don't know how many selections you can. We can you can click all of them, which is quite nice. But what do you like most about rugby league? Um, being part of my club's community. Uh, yeah. Uh, the TV broadcast, the tribalism of the clubs, the speed and physicality of the game, and the match day experience. For me, there's only the two options. It's being part of my club's community, but also the speed and the physicality of the game. I like that. That's what enticed me into the game originally. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, I think... Go on, Serbs. Well, as I say, the speed and physicality of the game is 100% the reason why we stay for it, why I stay for it. But I think that in terms of when I really enjoy rugby, it's when it's like, or in terms of the best rugby league I've watched, I always think of the experience I've had on the on Watch NRL and like the Australian broadcast. Yeah, the TV broadcast, yeah. But the thing is, if we're thinking about rugby league in this country, which IMG kind of are in that sense, I don't think the TV broadcast is something I'm that bothered in. I will turn the telly on two minutes before kickoff, and then change the channel as soon as the game's done. I'm not that bothered. And unless the game's been an absolute humdinger, and I like to see how it's been broken down. But like today, I've, I've switched it on just before kickoff. I've had it on my phone, and it's finished, so I've turned it off. Like, to me, the broadcasting in this country is oh, not at that level. No. Oh, no. It's not even like the whole... <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I can put it we are we are like in the UK though like we are UK fans enjoying rugby league. fair enough it's in in the NRL like, I I would agree with Toby about say like the NRL Grand Final yeah the the like 
the the like build up to that is is like part of the like experience of the whole thing for me, and that's I I, I, I like that Sunday for that reason. Yeah, I, I wouldn't tick it in this case because I I don't want them to think that I like what Sky Sports and yeah. what rubbish comes out of Phil Clark's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't tick it, but I, I see what I see what Toby's saying. I, like the, the, sometimes the build up, it's like the Super Bowl, isn't it? Like. Yeah, so many people tune into that. The build, the build. I mean, I watched the build up yeah. to the grand final in in terms of the Super League grand final, and I watched the mm. build up to the Challenge Cup. If I'm not able to make it to the actual game, um, for, so that, that for me, that's quite nice. This next question is is quite interesting. What do you dislike most about rugby league? Um, the first one is frequent changes to rugby league laws. Uh, I'm not that bothered about that. It's not necessarily for, bother me. The on field standard of professional rugby league. I don't think that's that bad in terms of on-field. There's an off-field standard of professional rugby league that has a massive issue, which we spoke about. Yeah. Um, the standard of rugby league refereeing disciplinary process. I've ticked it already. Um, the TV broadcast. I wouldn't say I dislike it. I wouldn't say, but I wouldn't say I like it. The match day experience, attending matches, and the cost of attending rugby league. I think a lot of those. I wouldn't say I dislike any of them, apart from the refereeing and disciplinary process. The, the rest I can I could deal with. I'm not that bothered. I think there needs to be a massive increase in performance levels and just the overall just level of quality of the standing of discipline and ref refereeing in the sport. Yeah. I yeah, think it's it's a frustration, isn't it, that we've had all year about like inconsistent punishments and yeah. things like that. So. Yeah, hundred percent. Go on. What were you about yeah, to say to me? Yeah, the referee's been talking here. Yeah. yeah, I was just saying, like, the referee is his is problem. Like, the on field standard wise, like, there hasn't been that many games with huge, huge score gaps no. that, for, in my memory this year. Well, there's, there's been, there was one. Don't get wrong, weekend. there's been. <laughs> 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 you've, had a lot, you've had a lot of team putting 30 on another team without reply type thing or putting 40 on, but it's very rare you've seen, like, a 70 to something. And I mean, don't, you know, you can't don't. laugh at. Um, Robin, I'm talking about West Tigers no, anyway, bro. I was about to say, you just said 70 something. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. <laughs> I try not to mention it. Uh, record defeat for both clubs this week. <laughs> oh, we've had an absolute shocker, Robin. Um, <laughs> Give me your wooden spoon. Oh, Jesus Christ. What? I'm going to bring, it in. I'm gonna bring it in when it's confirmed. I'm going to have a wooden spoon with West Tigers written on it in the background. <laughs> uh, another me. one? Yeah, another one, yeah. Uh, I don't think we've ever actually got the wooden spoon. Can I just point that out? Oh really? I genuinely oh. think I read something the other day, and I think that it said something about the Tigers are on the verge of picking up their first wooden spoon, which is absolutely oh. mental because they have been the worst team in the competition for the last decade. Um, but for me, this is quite easy. I think you just have to take the standard of ref rugby league refereeing and disciplinary process. That stands yeah. out so much more than the other options, doesn't it? I don't think the cost of attending rugby league is awful. I think it could be a little bit cheaper, but it's not disheartening. It's not dislike. I think the challenge. The Challenge Cup final tickets were quite nice, to, uh, nice and cheap-ish, but the, and the Super League Grand Final tickets are not overly expensive. But I think they're they're not necessarily rising or lowering in terms of the cost of living. Mm. With that going up, I think everything seems more expensive than before. But every, nothing's really changing, is it? No. What, one other thing I'd say about these two questions, um, I missed my chance to say it, but one of the things I actually would say I would like most of believe is the match day experience like for me i actually watch more games live than i do on tv it's a big part of it for me yeah I so i'd like to think the that nobody is disliking the match day experience because i think we actually have a, a real good um vibe and I'm, i mean toby's probably got more experience on the football side but i think we managed to avoid a lot of the things that football fans would say they dislike about football yeah. In the in terms of the tribalism and the like, you know, aggressive behaviour or, or uncomfortable atmosphere that you might get attending yeah. one of those games. Yeah, no, I, I totally know. agree. Come on, Toby. Match day experience is an interesting one for me in rugby league. Like, you know, North Coast Crusaders. I've been there when we've had when we've averaged about eight hundred fans. I've been there when they've averaged about two hundred fans. And like, I'm someone who loves to sing and like love well chant. You know, get behind the team that way. And there's never been a cohesive chanting group at Crusaders. There's mm. only been two separate ones doing their own thing, yeah. and like they're all because they're all in such small groups. You've got to, like you don't want to stand next to them because they don't know you, but you can't stand too far away because then you just look like an idiot singing on your own. Mm. And it's that kind of thing. Where, like, I genuinely like lower down the tiers. 
after the match day experience, you feel like you, you don't feel like you're necessarily part of that like tribe. Whereas mm-hmm. like you go football, a lot of clubs, if you're in the sta- in the home end of the stands, you know it's perfectly normal for you to to be as passionate as you want to be. Mm. Yeah, I totally get that. I it's totally, totally that totally like passion in rugby league can sometimes be like in a very certain area between a very certain click especially in league one yeah that's that is true and when we, we have got a few like teams that are playing out of like football grounds mm. and it it looks bad like even that league game that against york like half of the ground was empty and that was the Half of the ground that was on TV. Yeah, the cameras. The cameras do not help, do they? You should be. The cameras should always be pointing at the cr- the side that the crowd are on. Because yeah. then the game looks busy. It looks loud. Like you see it with Halifax. They film the the stand that's empty every week. It's like, why are you doing that? Like that empty stand is perfect for you to go and put a camera in because it's not in the way of anyone and you can see all the crowd. It's just to me, it it defeats the the purpose of filming a game. And like, I know you're focusing on what's going on on the pitch, but you need to be able to see that people are there. Yeah, that's how I see it anyway. Uh, this yeah. next section is probably going to take us quite a while because there's quite a few strongly agree to dis- strongly disagree just statements. Rapid-fire. So we're going to rapid fire it, quick fire. There are too many too many Super League fixtures. From me, agree. Yeah, strongly agree with that. Uh, in the regular league season, clubs should only play home and away fixtures and there should not be additional league fixtures. Strongly agree. Strongly agree. Strongly agree. Uh, Magic Round is an important component of the rugby league calendar. Strongly disagree. Mm. I'll put I'll put disagree. Disagree for me. Disagree, did you say, Toby? I said neither, like I'm just in the middle on it where I quite yeah, like it, having it. With the three of us then, we'll put disagree because it's that's the middle one of the three that we've chosen. That's the yeah. average. I just say, if you don't, yeah, all I'll say is if you don't go, I don't think you miss anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah. Totally yeah. Um, yeah. It is a nice one. Yeah. Promotion relegation should remain in Super League. In oh. my opinion, strongly disagree. Oh, really? Okay. I was going to say yeah. agree. I'm, I'm in the middle again. I'm on neither agree nor disagree. Yeah, so. You can go in the middle then. I, I don't mind that. Uh, rugby League should grow the game further in the areas outside the traditional heart- heartlands of the North. Strongly agree. Eventually, I, I, yeah. Even from the North, I strongly agree. <laughs> uh, clubs talked about it. Like, well, we push it every week, don't we? We say they need to do more to encourage what's going mm-hmm. on down the South. Clubs from France should participate in Super League. We agree. Strongly yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, it is not easy to buy tickets to attend rugby league games. Strongly disagree. Yeah, it's, you, it's you so can. Easy. You, the only the only difficulty that I've had in recent years is a lot of clubs have moved to like e-ticketing, yeah. and so buying tickets on the gate has become difficult. And there's a lot of like, I mean, <laughs> to IMG they probably don't care, but there's a lot of old guys out there that are a bit old fashioned and only deal with things in cash. And I've I've spoken to quite a few of them that have struggled to get in to watch nights games because you're meant to buy them in advance. Yeah, other than that, it's dead easy because not nothing sells out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, tickets are affordable priced for attending my club's home fixtures. I mean, I don't have a home club here. So I was probably going to click the middle one, but in terms of you two, that I, I mean, for what York, what was it, twenty quid? For yeah. Home? So yeah, York, York, York has been twenty five quid for the last year and a half, and um, recently it's come down to twenty quid. I don't know if that's some deal that's on or something. Maybe. Um. So, which is fair, I think. I'm I'm all right with that. Yeah. Halifax did the last four games of their season, home games, for twenty five pound. Four games for twenty five pound towards the end of the year. Bargain. That was mental. I saw that. So for me, I'd say agree. I think they're quite affordable price for attending. I don't know what the prices are at North Wales, uh, Toby. I think it, I think it's something. It's in the sort of like ten. I think it's about fifteen quid now. Uh, that's quite nice. Yeah, probably. I don't know. It, I think it went up from about ten to fifteen. But you know, it's um, it's just such a difficult one because for me, you know, with it being. You got football on a Saturday, and then it's like uh, you you yeah. putting extra money in on Sunday. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, for me that 
a sport which is only getting 200 people, 300 people through a League One gate, like, why is it, why should it cost that much? Other than, obviously, all the fact, the, the reasons are because there's too many fees to pay. Um, you need that money through the gate. It's just, like, all it's doing is pricing out people who might, may or may not yeah, go. People on the fence. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. Uh, tickets are affordably yeah. priced for attending my club's away fixtures. Um, I, I once again, I'm in, I'm in the middle here because I don't know what I don't go to many away fixtures, and I don't know how many of you two go to away fixtures. Well, I've been to watch a game at Cast this year. Oh, a couple of games at Cast. That's twenty three quid on the gate. That's uh, not bad, and I went. To, yeah, it's good. I mean, the reason why they the reason why it's cheap, I think, is because the ground's falling apart. <laughs> so they can't really just, and you've got to stand up as well. But when you think you're watching Super League stand up for 23 quid, it's quite good. Yeah, it's quite nice. Um, LFC, that was £30, which is a little bit more expensive. Like, they're starting to turn into that territory of like, I'm not going to do it too often. Um, yeah. But, you know, the, the KC Stadium is like one of the best yeah, in Super it's, League. It's, it's so. really, really nice. I mean, they wouldn't have put a Super League grand final there if it wasn't a nice stadium. Yeah. Um, so I'd say, I'd say agree. What about yourself, Toby? Is he there? I agree. You agree? Okay, we'll go agree. Uh, I would like to see more international games played. Uh, strongly agree. Me too. Is that three from three? I think you're losing connection, Toby. No. You keep dropping out. Did you say strongly agree? I'm not sure. I just found out the Derby results, isn't it? <laughs> no. Yeah, the Derby. I've just had that. Uh, I think we've got Liverpool away. Oh, he's gone. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, like, so. Liverpool away, is it? Hold on. Look, apparently, oh, my mate Jack is saying it. Man is, City, Chelsea, waiting. having a laugh. Oh, fuck off. Sorry. That's. I've, 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 <laughs> I've, I've done a swear. I've done a swear for the first time all year. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, oh, I strongly let's move on. The Challenge Cup final should be played at different venues each year. Strongly disagree. Keep I like Wembley. Keep it there, please. I I'm a bit torn because I think that um, Tottenham went really well. If, if and Tottenham think, was where Wembley is, I wouldn't have a problem. I think ha having like a literally empty Wembley, it just feels a little bit embarrassing, uh, and it it kind of feels like. <laughs> It kind of feels like Wembley are doing us a favour just because they've done it for so long they feel too bad to say no now. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing it move, but I wouldn't want to see it like all over the country. Like, I think it needs to stay in London. Really. Yeah, I, I, I agree. London as well. Um, I'll put I'll put disagree. I'll, I could put I, I could put in the middle. I'll go in the middle. I'm not that bothered really. I don't really care. Uh, Challenge Cup final to Challenge Cup final. It still it still felt fantastic this year. Uh, the Challenge Cup should remain a pure knockout competition, straight knockout. Strongly agree. Yeah, me too. Toby, are you there or are you crying? I agree, I agree, I'm here. <laughs> uh, an origin competition would work at men's level. Let's not discuss this because we all know that it's not going to work and we all strongly disagree. I'll put, I'll put just disagree. There's still, you know, I'm Yorkshire bias. It would be cool, but it would be um, cool. I'd like to see it at least once before they decide. Do you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. pre-season or something would be nice. Not in the middle of the year, like a pre-season or a pre yeah, pre yeah, or something. Just one game maybe at the start of the year, one game in the middle, and then one game at the end, just for fun. Just a one-off game, and it could be a bit like. Um, all stars versus indigenous, where it's not yeah. necessarily the top players; it's just who's who's up for it. Yeah, who's up for it? I like that idea. I would like that idea. Let's move on. You said neither agree nor disagree on promotion relegation should uh, should remain in Super League. What factors influenced your decision? Um, uh, Toronto Wolfpack to lose. Uh, Lee Centurions <laughs> fill in the blank. That's what I would tell him. <laughs> Lee Centurions. No, I'm going to put Lee Centurions and London Broncos. Yeah. <laughs> and London Broncos. Well, who's the odd one out? Who's right, we... the odd one we... out? L London. <laughs> they deserve... 
to stay up and you didn't allow it <laughs> the others come up and go straight back down and it's boring yeah that's fair isn't it that's fair Toby's Wi-Fi is gone. I thought it was mine that was going to be an issue. Um, so we'll move on. You said strongly agree on the clubs from France should participate in the Super League competitions within the UK. What factors influenced your answer? Um, oh, well, what, wait, wait, sorry, what was the question? You, we said strongly agree on the clubs from France should participate in the Super League competitions within the UK. What factors influenced your decision? Um, the flair, the French bring yep on match day is unmatched especially when they play each other yeah i it's think it's I important think. for the um, international game as well it's good for france which is good for us important for the international game for france and all the home nations right because of the of all the players that are eligible mm. uh have you attended a super league magic weekend in the last five years no have you a super league game a super league magic weekend magic weekend uh last time when it was probably yeah, it was probably four years ago so yeah, yeah I, I say no for my personal one but you'll, you'll put yes on yours which of the following reasons explain why you haven't attended a super league magic weekend before uh, I'm genuinely not interested. I'm too far from where I live. Our two figures are too expensive. I yeah. don't know about prices, but I'm genuinely not interested. And it's too far from where I live are probably the two main reasons. Yeah, the ticket price I think is fair when you when you think of the, like what you're paying for what you're getting. Yeah. But but for you, you've got to think of the travel. Yeah. Exactly. If you're doing both days, you've got to get a hotel. You've got all your food and drinks in between that. So it's a very expensive weekend. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, I've just clicked. I'm genuinely not interested. If Rugby League introduced a 10-10 league structure whereby the Super League and Championship will consist of 10 teams in each league, with promotion and relegation to the, each league at the end of the season, how appealing would this be to you? Um, I don't know. 10 plus 10 league structure. So you'd have two conferences of 10 to a 20-team Super League and a 20-team... Is that how I'm reading that? Yeah, it's not a million miles off what we've got now, is it really? We just lose four just, teams just out of the 12, bottom. Just do 12 and 12. It's so simple. You do 12 and 12 all the way down to National Conference League 3 and you get rid of West Wales. It's perfect. It works. And I tell you that it works because I had a chat with uh, John Sutton, not uh, oh, yeah. Tony Sutton, the CEO of the RFL, and I showed him that it works. Um, I won't discuss anything that happened in that conversation publicly, uh, but we had a but good believe me, it happened. <laughs> believe me, it happened, and a lot of the questions that we're answering today were mentioned in our chat. And I won't, I won't, I can't divulge in the answers publicly. But um, this wasn't mentioned. But I don't know. I don't. I think this is really unappealing. I don't want ten and ten. Ten's too. Ten's not enough. But fourteen's too much. I think twelve's perfect. It's twenty-two rounds. Then you go to playoffs, which is three weeks. Then you've got your final, which is another week. So that's 26 games in Super League up to the from round one to the final. Then you've got five Challenge Cup games of which the Super, which just means the semi-finals uh, become Magic Week. Oh, no, the quarterfinals become Magic Weekend because you can run the Challenge Cup men and women's competitions in parallel to each other, which means you get four games on a Saturday and four games on a Sunday in the same stadium sorted. I love it. Easy, but unappealing. You didn't even have to check your notes. That's like... I've got it. It's in it's, my head. It's, <laughs> it's ready. It's, it's like ready. a loaded gun. Anyone oh, ask a question? Look you're at the like, next question. <laughs> How many clubs do you think should participate in the Super League? Season? <laughs> Twelve! <laughs> Exactly. 12. Uh, would you get behind a regional city-based competition incorporated into rugby league calendars similar to cricket's 100 with men and women's... Uh, yeah, I probably would actually. Like a nines or something. No, actually, I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't know. I'd need to know more information, I think. Yeah, that's quite a difficult question to answer. I'm going to put don't know. 
I think for me, my answer is going to be different because I've got access to so many games living where I do. Yeah, I agree. Whereas, yeah. If there was a short format competition incorporated into the annual calendar, should it be seven or nine aside? Nine. Nine, yeah. Seven's a shit. <laughs> We're swearing a lot this week. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realise. That's two swears. Is there anything else you think is important to consider for the future of rugby league in the UK, France? Yes. Open the trap door at the bottom of League One and rename the national the NCL and SCL to the National Conference League North and National Conference League South. There we go. That's what I think. Then two up and two two down two relegated from League like One and one each promoted from the lower divisions. There we go. That that gives away some of what I spoke about the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know if you agree with that. Um, I'm not sure. It, it, <laughs> open the words "opening the trap door" fills me with fear for those teams <laughs> at the bottom of League One. But I, I'd have to, like you said, it's it's quite a complex thing to try and summarise. So I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's it's quite difficult. It's it's very much very much branding. That's the end of the survey. I feel like we got really passionate towards the end of that. Yeah, that's what happens with Rugby League fans. That's what we do. That's what we do. Um, Toby's Wi-Fi dropped out, so hopefully he'll he might be back for the set of six. But we'll um, we'll go through them. Uh, I've got what I've got one thing to add about the survey that I'm really surprised didn't come up, and I was waiting for. Go on. And that was about changing the name of Super League. Yeah, that... I'm really surprised they didn't ask that, or they didn't like hint if... that that was on the cards. I was asked this question the other day uh, by somebody. And I gave my answer. Mm. But before I give my answer, would one, would you rebrand Super League? Two, what would, if you would, what would you rebrand it to? Yeah, um, I, I would be open to the idea of rebranding Super League, definitely. I think not because I want to, but because I kind of feel like we don't have a choice, given that lots of things are called Super League that are now bigger than our sport yeah um but i don't know what to call it we're in a bit of an awkward situation where <laughs> the name of our sport is league and if we want to also be called the league there's, you one, there's like... one really simple solution go on tell, please tell me put the word rugby in between the two words the league rugby league bet fred super rugby league Super Rugby or League. Just Super Rugby League. It's Super League Netball. It's uh, the Pakistani Cricket Super League. It's all got the name of the sport, but because we are Rugby League, it's makes it really yeah. difficult. So you have to put Super Rugby League. I think it's really it's oh, that wow. simple. It's so, it's so simple. It's been staring us in the face this whole time. I know, and I'll it's Super I, Rugby and League. I, and I've given that answer. To the COO of the rugby football. Team. Oh come on, Brian! <laughs> you're going to be the smuggest man in the world if this if they announce that. That is that's perfect because it it sort of it, we're not throwing out the Super League brand completely. We're not. Do you know what I mean? All yeah, the hard work we, we put in the brand. I don't think. It, I mean, we've had twenty five years of it, right? So yeah. if we're going to rebrand, now's the time. But I don't think we can afford to get rid of the Super League name yet. No, I think like if we could change this completely, we'd be back to square one. Whereas, like say, if it was Super Rugby League, you almost wouldn't even notice that. That's do you yeah, know what I mean? You like, wouldn't notice the change at all. And and you've also got the whole, you know, it's not rugby union, it's rugby league. Yeah. <laughs> like it, if you if you type rugby league in a search bar, the two words are next to each other. So Super Rugby League is going to be high on the hit yeah. list. I like it. I actually like it. Yeah, I thought you might. SRL. Uh, yeah, so it'd be SRL. 
it's like the National Rugby League is the NRL, isn't it? It's quite easy in Australia because it's one of their number one sports. I think it is. Mm. Their, it's believe it's their number one sport behind. Uh, I'll say number two sport behind Aussie rules, I believe. Uh, cricket are mm. very, very close third. Uh, but it's time. We've, we're an hour and ten minutes in. That that survey, when you do it you're personally at home without having to discuss the questions with other people, should only take you ten to fifteen minutes. It's taken us a lot longer than that today because we've, we've we've gone through it. So apologies that it took a little bit longer. I thought it was going to be quite a shorter episode. Um, but we need to do we need to do set of six. Um, mm. I need to find. I need to just make a note of where where we are in terms of who's predicted what so i'll just get my notes app up and then go from there a set of six here we go uh game number one then was wakefield versus hull kr um this weekend um so what i mean to wakefield this is like secure they have to win to be a hundred percent safe this weekend yeah um, for me, for me, I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna go Wakefield. They've been playing absolutely for outstandingly the last couple of weeks, and they've really pushed on from where they were just just three weeks ago. I think. Yeah, I I think I agree. Actually, I think Wakefield. I think like the the need to win is greater than Hull KR's, and I feel like Hull KR sort of run out of a bit of steam. Like they were sort of str- str- struggling on with without a few key players, and yeah. but I don't think. Yeah, so I, I agree, Wakefield. Yeah, it's quite it's quite simple. Uh, the next one's probably a little bit tough. Uh, Warrington versus Castleford. Uh, Warrington, not going to be a playoff team this year. They've already released six or seven players they announced today. Widdop leaving, Matt Davis leaving, Jason Clark leaving. Kyle Amor, we know, is going to witness. Quite a few players dropping out of that team. Um, really, really interesting to see. And they go up against the Castleford side that hasn't been amazing this year but mm. is very much still in contention for the top five top four spot Where yeah typical one's call i feel like sometimes you see teams that have like uh the season's over we're all leaving anyway and then they just start playing well because the pressure's gone yeah um whereas but casper have that desire to get into the to playoff spots i mean that it's going to be a stretch but it's, there's still a chance. Uh, uh, I think I'd rather see Cass win as well. I'll, I'll go to Cass. Yeah, um, for me, I think the, what you just said about Warrington pushing and playing without pressure would be a lot easier for them. And mm. They might go out there and play really, really well and players are going to want to end, end on a high if they've not got contracts for next season. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I'd like to see Cass just go out there and whip them by 50, not going to lie. I'd just love to go and see that. That would be that'd be fantastic. Um, and then maybe, 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 maybe Daryl Clark would lose his job. Not Daryl Clark. But, yeah. Is it Dar- no, Daryl Powell would lose his job. And Toulouse might still yeah. catch him. Uh, and Toulouse may very well still catch Warrington. Yeah. If, I mean, if any team's going down, please let it be Wire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> York at home um, Friday night against Sheffield Eagles. Obviously, coming off that massive defeat to Lee, but guaranteed a playoff spot, so there's not as much pressure now, is there, for them to to get that win? But you want to you want to go into the playoffs, three games to the playoffs. You're going to want to go in there and finish as high as you want, because if you finish sixth, it looks like you're going to have to travel to the Shea, and you, you, no one's going to want that the way Halifax are playing at home this season. Mm. Yeah, I think um, like. Like you say, Sheffield haven't got a chance. They'll be they'll they'll smell blood after last week, but then at the same time, I am I would like to think that James Ford is gonna absolutely flog them in training, and they're gonna have, do you know what I mean they're gonna have to prove that they've got what it takes in the playoffs. So, um, I think I, I'm I'm gonna pick York. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, gonna I'm scared. Yeah, I think I'd like to see York fight back and beat Sheffield, and I think it's very very obvious. That, that that is going to happen if Sheffield suddenly come forward and run riot and they put 60 on um, York, then I don't think we can be massively surprised if it happens. I know, it's weird, uh, one, isn't it? But then again, Sheffield are only seventh. They are seventh. They're the next best team in the league. Are, so yeah. it's it's very close. I think for that reason, I think I'm going to go Sheffield. I mean, 
Uh, and after last week, they've got a, a better points difference as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they do by by quite a bit, um, which is yes. Yeah, so for me, I think I'm going to have to go Sheffield on that one, even though they've really got nothing to play for apart from best of the rest. Um, next up, then massive derby at the top of Super League: Wigan versus Saints. If Saints win, they become League League's winners. Um, they, you can't look past them, can you? Or are Bevan French and Jai Field and just the talent that Wigan have got going to run riot? Yeah, I. A really difficult one to call. I mean, I think this this could be a uh, grand final warm up. Really, mm. the, the two best teams. I actually went to watch Saints play uh, last week against Hull FC, I saw and that. they, yeah, they were ruthless. They were absolutely ruthless. Um, that Saints side is so good. Um, Scary, but it? this. Yeah, they they ha- they haven't been as dominant this year as they have been in previous years, and and, and Wigan have have beat them already. So um, I don't know. There's something about this Wigan side that I could see him getting the result over Saints. I think I'm going to have to go in my head after the display that I saw from Saints, and you know the last the success they've had. They're going to want to go for that trophy, even though it's a bit meaningless with the loop fixtures. They're still going to get some stuff sort of where I saw. Saints for me. Yeah, I'm going Saints as well. I think if to to win the League Leader Shield at the home of their biggest rivals would be absolutely mental, and especially if they went out there and, and annihilated them as well. Like that's you know that's very much could happen when it when it comes to Saints. Uh, moving over to the NRL, it is time for Souths versus North Queensland. Um, North Queensland could finish second. Uh, with with a, uh, three more games to go, but they could also finish as low as fifth, or even they could even finish as low as seventh. Their their playoff spot is still not one hundred percent guaranteed. Uh, oh no, it wow. is, sorry, it is guaranteed. They could just still finish as low as eighth, which is absolutely mental when you think about where they were three weeks ago chasing Penrith, who are the minor premiers now. But Cowboys in second. Souths in seventh, six points of difference, but Souths have been on fire the last few weeks. Yeah, they have. And like you said, um, Cowboys have sort of dropped a little bit recently, haven't they? Um, Yeah. Pretty sure Souths actually beat Cowboys not too long ago as well, didn't they? Like quite a good win. So Yeah, I believe so. I think I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the rabbits for this one. Oh, we're going to go different here. I think I'm, I'm going to back the Cowboys on this one. I think they're going to really want to push forward. And since that 2015 season, this is the best Cowboys team we've seen in a very, very long time. And I'd love to see them. Yeah, I love with. them. I really, really would. If, if I wasn't a West Tigers fan, I think I'd be a Cowboys fan. Just because of the way they play. Yeah. Rugby. I, I, like, I do like this Cowboys team. I think I would, I would rather see them make it to the final than... Than the rabbit yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you here. Uh, last game of the weekend, Halifax versus Bradford. Third game of the between the two teams this year. Um, the loop fixture at Sub- Summer Bash was not needed, even though Halifax won it. Um, two wins out of two from the previous fixtures between Halifax and Bradford. Bra- Halifax winning some of those games by having two less players on the pitch, or they won one of them games with twelve men after a red card in the first tackle of the game. So, I think this is for me, it's really easy. I'm going to go with my heart uh, and my head and every other thing in the body you can make a decision <laughs> with and go for Halifax. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't list all your body parts there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm also going to go Halifax. Like, they've had completely opposite seasons, really, haven't they? So, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna back your team for that one as well. Nice. I'd just like to point out there is only one point difference between me and you. Still, really, table. you're on seventy, I'm on sixty nine, and I believe Toby is on wow. sixty two points. So he's catching, but it's he is. there is still time to go. But Dark horse. he is he is catching us. We have faltered in in recent weeks, and he has put together some big big scores of five and six points uh, over the last few prediction weeks we haven't got toby's predictions yet unfortunately his wi-fi dropped out um just before we did this and he hasn't sent them over yet so once we send them over we'll make sure that there's a graphic up ready to go on social media sorry we haven't posted a lot on, on our on our twitter this year it's been a very very busy summer 
Um, and once we know more about sort of where we're going to go next year, we will obviously discuss that privately and, and sort of get back to you on that one. But we will be with you for at least another, I believe, nine episodes. Maybe, no, yeah. no, seven episodes before now and the end of the, the World Cup. So very much looking forward to that. Very much looking forward to the... The end of the rugby league season as it hots up now. We haven't really spoken about anything that's happened on the pitch um, this week, but we will make sure that we we catch up with everything going on on the field when the playoffs start in a fortnight's time, um, or even shorter than that, I think, which is absolutely mental when you think about how quickly the season's been. Robin, thank you very much for joining me. Toby, thank you for joining me. When you see this, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Go and enjoy Derby versus Liverpool in a, in two weeks' time, which means you're not going to be able to come and which means you're not going to be able to stream or catch us on a Tuesday uh, again, which is which is frustrating. We have to move to a Wednesday just for you, um, <laughs> but no, we'll um, we'll be back in two weeks' time. I've, I've been Brad. That's been Robin. That was Toby earlier on, and we've been the Biff Rugby League Podcast, brought to you by Swinging Arms and Shoulder Charges. Uh, see you in a fortnight. Goodbye. <laughs>